All right, here we go. It's oil and water time, so I'm going to show you a great oil and water trick, and I'm going to teach you. Sounds great? Here we go. So, four black cards and four red cards. The black cards are actually lighter because they're oil-based, uh, yeah, and the red cards are heavier because they're water-based. So here we take a red and a black, a red and a black. Once again, here we take a red and a black, a red and a black. Yeah, we're trying to mix these together. You see a red, a black, a red, and a black. Just like that. Alright, so I mixed these together. Just like that. But you know, as I said, there are some heavier cards and some lighter cards, and they'll separate. Just like this, with a tap. See, one, sorry, two, three, all four black cards actually rise to the top. Which means on the bottom we have all four red cards. Alright. Um, actually, we'll try it again. Leave the black on the table and the uh, reds in my hand. Actually, no. The blacks will be face up in my hand, too. That'll be easier. So here we go. We have a black. And just to make sure you, it won't go anywhere, this is a red card. A red. And I'll take it again. This is another black because we're trying to mix these together, as I just said to you. So another black and another red. Just like that. So there, that's a, that's a mixture. I'm going to give it another mixture of red and blacks red red black black bam mix them in and all it takes is just a tap to make the black to rise to the top and the red to sink to the bottom if it didn't catch it the last two times this is the one last time that you're you might have a chance one two three four black cards and four red cards the blacks are gonna go on the table while the reds are gonna go in my hand Watch, on a count of three, it's going to happen one, two, and three. You see, we have all, sorry, we have all four black cards rise to the top just like this. And one, two, three, four red cards just sunk to the bottom. All right, tutorial time. I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. It's really simple. You want to maintain your lighter cards. You really only use eight cards. No gimmicks. You want to maintain your lighter cards on a table in a spread and your heavier cards in your hand. And right now, I'll teach you some physics. You see, when you add pressure, apply pressure on the top and bottom of the deck and you pull, sorry, that was a failure, and you pull, you see, you're going to strip out the top and bottom cards. Just like that. And you're going to maintain, you're going to have the whole uh, balance of the deck in your hand, just like this. The same thing with four cards, because you're going to do it with four cards now. All you do is you apply pressure on the top and bottom of the packet and use these two fingers, your ring and thumb, to pull. And you're actually going to pull these two cards out and leave these two square like a double in your hand and you actually do a double to show a single. You get it? And from there, you scoop up a black and a red in a fairest manner. And red, black, but actually it's two reds. Now, do it again. Do the exact same motion, but now you're left with three cards in your packet, so it's really just peeling out a single. You want to make the actions um, the same because you want the spectators to you know, not feel anything funny happening. And right now, this, this time, you can clearly show a red and a black because they are clean. From here, you continue. You show the bottom card, but actually you're dealing down the top card. So, a red... Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. So, at speed, as you look, a red... Oh, why am I failing at this, this simple stuff? Anyways, so a red, a black, a red, and a black. You get it? Alright. Yeah, I like, I like to leave this last one face up because it looks like, you know, a solid, bam, face up card left on there. It won't go anywhere. It's just a solid face up card. And right now, you're in a position where it's almost automatic. All you need to do is you push over, um, get a break under the top card, which is a red card, and you take the double. You don't want to sh you don't want to show it's a double. You want to take it concealed as a double, as a double faced double faced facer, so to speak. And you take it, and then you can reveal the black ones on top and the red one, the red ones on bottom. But here's one important thing: if you're sh here we go. If you're showing the blacks um, like this, you know, like you normally do, because normally we add on cards to the bottom, this is going to be awkward because then you're going to have three red cards and the fourth red card just disappeared. Now that is a vanishing card trick, a totally different effect. That's not what you want to do here uh, unless you really want to do it. So you don't want 
if you don't want a vanishing card effect, what you do is do a reverse count. If you're if you're counting like this, you want to make sure that you do a reverse count. Just make sure this card end up on the bottom and you don't flash. Just make sure these two uh, you achieve these two and um, I don't know, you know it doesn't matter what kind of count you do. And right now this card is at the bottom. At the bottom, all you do is square these back up, show the blacks, and cleanly show the reds. Right now, take the reds up in your hand again and flip the blacks over face down. There's a reason for this. You want, because here, here you want to do a triple, then you're going to do this. Uh, essentially, you're going to do this, but you can't do this in front of a spectator's face because they might, they just might see it, you know. You know, they'll know, you know. Anyways, um, so you do a triple and you want to have motivation to, you know, to do something like this, to put the triple back, but something like, like, this and this is just weird and what I came up with is that you know we leave the blacks on the table and the um, reds you know just naming the reds in my hand and sorry actually because you want to end up in in this position so you say oh excuse me actually I'm gonna leave the blacks face up so the motivation for you to take this card out is you want to flip the blacks over and take it back in your hand is because you want to take these as a spread. So once again, all you're doing is leaving these face up deliberately. Do a triple and say the reds and oh, actually I'm going to leave the blacks face up in my right hand. And you're done. You're said and done. Right now, don't be afraid. Do a quadruple. Put this on there. Do a quadruple. Don't be afraid because this spread is going to hide most of it. Deal down one, and right now you can't deal down this because they'll know, you know. So what you want to do is, if the spectator's eyes are looking from here down, like you are right now, you want to point this directly to their eyes because they can't see this. And it's pretty simple. Um, the excuse you're using is, you know, it won't go anywhere. As you can see, it's cl clearly a red card, and you deal it down. It's not a big deal, but... You know, you just want to have motivation to do these strange motions. And you add back on a black. And from here, you want to do a double. Now, you're in this position, so the double should be simple. You can just come over, feel the break, because the cards are bowed in a special way. So you can just come over, feel the break, and I'd fail because I didn't do it that way. Um, I do it, actually, I use a pinky count. I use these two cards to hide these, this spread, this mini spread, to hide a pinky count. So right now, I, d I finish with the pinky count, I do a double, and you continue. Use any method you like, just do a double, and deal it down, and right now you want to scoop out the bottom card with these fingers, scoop it out, oh, sorry, that was two, scoop it out, and show it, a red. And everything seems so clean, so clean right now. All you're doing now is you're supposedly mixing the reds and blacks but in actuality it's all done it's all automatic if you're if you followed you know the slides and right now you're in for the last phase which is the visual phase the visual rise phase so here you go you want to have a break here which means you want to have a break above three under five just you know as you're talking as you're patterning doing whatever just remember to hold your pinky break here and right now I'm gonna give you a side view by the way never give your audience a side view because I'm gonna show you how to count this down this is some sort of a, a false count so you come over no that wasn't good here here we go you come over you peel off one maintaining the break peel off two no funny moves here still maintaining the break though three and here's the funny move the packet switch you come over grab everything above the break as you're counting four so in the spectators view it should look something like one two three four and you've just switched the cars out so once again you want to have a break um, under under five above three and you count you peel you maintain the break you take take this packet of five cards maintain a break and go one still you have the break here as you can see two three and here's um, by the way you want to make the rhythm you know you want to have the right rhythm you don't want to go one two three four you know it doesn't look good at all you want to go nice and slow in a rhythm that you know keep a constant rhythm rhythm like one two three and four something like that so once again, it's just a five card packet. You count one, two, three, and you come over, do a packet switch. So what you've achieved is you switch out the cards. 
Now what you want to do is you want to get this card on the bottom of this pack. It's pretty simple. You can either, you know, maintain a break that was there before or you can just push and push and get your, get your break. Right now you want to add this on and place these on the table. I don't do it that way because I think it looks weird because you see you go uh, lengthwise and widthwise. It's just weird. So this is a great move here. You go lengthwise you grab the card from the break, so right now you're in your break is here, you're in control of 3 and 5, once again 3 and 5, yeah. And what you're going to do is, with one constant motion, you push to the front and you pivot the bottom packet off your middle finger and ring finger. It's going to look something like this. It's a really beautiful move, it's some, some sort of a vision, vision retention move. Um, you can't do it when your spectator is behind you, but if your spectator is all, you know, like what, 180 degrees, they're not gonna, they're not gonna notice this. It's pretty cool. So, just do the move. Actually, you ha only have three cards here and five cards here. So this is the black packet, and this is the red packet. In actuality, sorry, you have the blacks here and the reds here. So all you, all, all that's left is a change and a revelation. So again, you want to take this card at. Uh, you want to have a break, obtain a break here under the top card and take the double over, spread the three cards, once again, you know, reinforcing the image of you only have four cards, but of course you don't want to say it out loud, like, I only have four cards. Get it? You'll get it. And right now what you're doing is basic, basically it's a rhythm, rhythm thing. It's a one, two. You want to do this change and do this revelation right away, one after another. So the change basically looks like this. It's really simple. All you do is to throw it, throw it over, and as you throw it over, you want to get this to pivot, to to flip over basically, to pivot off your these fingers, and it will drop, flip over like that. So at speed, it should look something like that. Or when you're throwing the card over, something like that. Uh, you don't you don't need to get it perfectly aligned. Of course, if you practice like a thousand times a day and get it perfectly aligned, you're awesome. But you don't need to because uh, you'll know in a second. So basically, you know, this can't fool anybody. This change cannot fool anybody because it looks pretty much like a flip, you know. But you're adding on these three cards. Because you have more cards here, you throw it over, they will follow these cards automatically. Although here is a change happening, they won't you they wouldn't see this card drop on drop on there. And another cover thing is that after you've done these, that is failure. That failed, all right? I admit, but anyways, I'm gonna do it again, real quick for you. So, something like that. That was actually pretty good, but actually you wanna get the rhythm like one and two flowing away, but that was pretty good also. So you want, once you're in this position or in that position, you wanna push these black cards and show them, um, you can show them in that manner or you can just push them all forward like that, because this card, will definitely move. It will definitely be slight side jogged, out jogged or whatever. It it couldn't be perfectly aligned. If you practice ten thousand times a day, you might get it, but you don't need to. And right so you just push the cards around and spread these and right now you're you're in clean. Show the red cards. Bam, you get your miracle. Looks very clean. Hope you like it. Actually I know you will. Practice is not hard at all and baffle your friends. So that's all there is to it. Bye.